Hey YouTube, it's Manny. So I've been downloading a lot of Discord bots for my server lately. And while they're all pretty good, they all seem to be lacking a feature or two. Given that I'm a software engineer by trade, I figured why not give my own go at it writing a bot. The two languages I know best are Java and Python, and both have very good Discord uh, SDKs for, available for them. But as the title of this video says, I chose Python to write the bot in. In this video, I'm gonna go over setting up the development environment for this and creating your very first bot. It's gonna be a very basic bot. It's gonna connect and respond to a ping command. That's it. Before we start, if you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button and ding that notification bell so you know when there's new videos. And if you're looking for any help with what we're covering in this video, please look me up on the Demolition Discord server. The link is in the description below. I'm gonna make a couple of assumptions at first, and those that you already have a Discord user and Discord server, otherwise known as a guild, already set up. If you don't, create those first. This video will not cover the creation of those. Let's first create a Discord bot application on a Discord developer's website. We're gonna to go to discord.com slash developer slash applications. I'll put a link to this URL in the description below. And in here, you may have, if you haven't logged in, log in. And then from this page, we're actually gonna just create a new application. You're gonna give your application a name. Now, my Discord server is called the Militia. So I'm gonna call it the Militia app. Hit create. Now we have our app created. Now we actually have to add a bot to it. So go over here on the left hand side, click bot. Now a bot is what listens and reacts to what happens on the server. So hit add. And then yes, we're gonna actually create one. And by default, the name will be the same as the app. So we're gonna change this. I go with um, military theme, militia. So the Intel officer, I'm going with that. And then we're gonna actually select an image for it. I'm gonna use my um, logo, like that, and save. All right, now that we have our bot created, we're actually gonna give it permission. So click on OAuth 2 over here. OAuth 2 is two things. It's authentication, which allows your bot to log into the server, and authorization, which is once it's authenticated, what can it actually do on the server? Hence, auth2. Authenticate, authorize. Now, we're gonna look down here and select uh, bot scope, because it is a bot, and we're gonna get bot permissions. Now, for permissions, you wanna only give the bot permissions it needs. Do not just give full admin administration permissions unless you need it. As we develop the bot, we'll give it more and more permissions, but for now, we'll only be giving the bot send message permissions, because it's just gonna be responding to a command we send it. Now, we have that, we have a bot and a send message. Now in here, we have the actual, how to, how to actually add the bot to your server. So we're gonna copy this. We're gonna add it to, we're gonna paste it into a new tab window and hit enter. Now it opens up, now typically this should show your, um, the new uh, logo we put in there, but I think because it just got updated, it, it might not be there already. So that's, it's fine. Militia app, discord, add bot to server. I only have one. If you have multiples, you have to make sure you choose the right one, select it and hit continue. And then it actually confirms what permissions we're gonna give it, send messages, which is cool because that's all we set, right? So authorize. I'm not a robot. Traffic lights. Authorize. Now let's head over to our Discord server and check out, see if our bot made it. So militia. And then, so I'm in the welcome page and if we scroll down, it won't be logged in, so it's not an online user. If we look for offline and we scroll all the way down there, we see Intel officer bot right here. He's not verified, no check mark for him, but this is our officer. So he's here, great, all set. Now that we have our bot in here, let's actually go ahead and set up our development environment so we can actually start writing code to actually start and run this bot. So we're gonna head over to www.jetbrains.com slash pycharms to get, we're gonna actually use the pycharms IDE for this. I'll actually put a link for this as well in the description below. We're gonna download. Now there's a professional, which is a paid for. I mean, you get a free trial, but it, you have to pay for it eventually, or community, which is open source and free. Take the community one. Now you don't have to actually give your email address if you don't want to or anything like this. Just save it and start the download. And once it's finished downloading, let's double click. To install. And I just basically we're gonna go through and choose all the defaults. We're not worried about it. I'm not creating a shortcuts or anything like that. Just gonna install defaults. And we'll just click it to run it and finished. 
I don't have any imp anything to import. We're going to skip remaining defaults and just let it set up. All right. So first thing we do is click new project. So we're going to name it Python project, but we're going to call it militia discord app. All right. Now it's going to create a new uh, virtual environment. What this means is you can actually have multiple virtual environments. And the nice thing about Python is that these virtual environments won't interfere with anything else. If you're working on multiple projects and you have Python installed in a central location and you keep installing um, different versions of applications in that, you can actually have conflicts. Like if one app's using one version of something and another app's using another version of something, this way you have vir virtual environments and it installs in the virtual environment so that you never have contamination across projects with different versions. All right, so we go base interpret is Python 3.8. We're going to use that. And everything else is going to be default. And we're going to say create. That's going to take time. It's going to create the virtual environment. It's going to download Python and all this other stuff. So it's going to take some time. Don't show tips. Close. You can walk through the tips if you want to. We'll go over a lot of stuff. Um, I'll help you over a lot of things as, it's, uh, as we go through and start developing. Now, interesting enough, it created a base project for us, which is fine. Now you have Windows Defender might impact performance, right? So what we want to do is... Um, I looked this up a little bit. It seems to be safe enough to actually exclude directories, but let, I want to first show you what it's going to do. So what we're going to do is down here, we're going to say Windows Security, click on Windows Security, say Virus and Threat Protection. You're going to go Virus Threat Protection, No Action Needed, Manage Settings, right? Scroll down to the bottom, Exclusions, Add Move Exclusions. I have nothing in here. We're going to say, let this go, Exclude Directories. We're going to let the ID configure automatically. What it's going to do is put uh, exclusions for uh, Windows Defender if that's all you're running for virus protection or if you have another one, right? So configure automatically, we'll allow it. And if we look back here, it automatically adds the PyCharms folder so that uh, my project is automatically added to it. That's all it's doing. So this, this folder won't be a uh, virus scan, which speeds up um, the performance of the IDE. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is delete main. Don't need it. So to actually connect to um, the disc to Discord, we're actually going to use a Discord.py, which is a pro an open source project. And in order, to add, in order to add that, there's two different ways you can add it. And I'll show you both. First, you can go to File, Settings, down here in Project. You have Most Discord App. That's our actual project. Python Interpreter. And here's a couple things that are installed: pip and setup tools. These are actually package installing programs. But we're going to actually hit Add Install, and we're going to type discord.py it's important it's important to do .py because if you do discord there's actually another one in there now you have discord.py it's version 1.3.4 you can actually specify and install an older version we're not going to we're going to install the package package installed and close this hit ok and close that so the other way to install it is actually using the terminal down here and using the actual pip command, which is uh, Python install uh, package installer. I don't remember the exact acronym means, but it's, it's Python package install. So you're gonna do pip install discord.py equals equals 1.3.4 the version. Now this is gonna tell us we've already installed it, but that's fine. It's actually installed discord by. All right. So um, it's already installed. So we have our in de development environment set up. We have discord.py installed in our virtual environment. So now it's time to actually write our Discord bot. So we're going to go up here, right click on Militia Discord app, and we're going to add a Python file. We're just going to call it bot for now. Now we're going to say bot equals commands dot bot command prefix. And you can use any prefix you want. I'm just going to leave it like this for now. And hit enter. Now you notice this is under uh, there's a red underscore in here. So if we click on it and go here, it will actually import this name and discord.exe commands, and that has now imported it. So you could type this out yourself if you wanted to, but I often like just type the commands and it'll automatically import for me. Now we're going to type our decorator, which is this makes this met, uh, method actually a Discord function so that it understands what it's doing. It's gonna be an asynchronous function. And I'll explain what that means in a second. Ping 
ETX, which is the context that's required for every single one. And with async, you need a wait context dot send on. All right. So async functions um, get put into an event loop. This is how commands get stored. So when the bot gets a command, it knows what to do, basically is what it is. Now, CTX is the context. It's required for all commands, and it's the context in which the command is being invoked under. So that way you get this, so then you can actually send the command back to the right server. All right, so a couple quick Python housekeeping things. All right, you can see these things drive me nuts anyway, right? So you can see the, the yellow squiggly lines. What this is, this is actually the uh, PyCharms telling me that I'm breaking a PEP8 rules. PEP8, all right, let, let's say this. PEP, P-E-P, -E stands for Python Enhanced Proposals. So um, they're basic styling guides and things like that, what you should do in Python, what you shouldn't, or what Python should do. PEP8 is the styling guide standard for Python, so basically how a file should be formatted. So before functions, PEP8 wants you to have two spaces, hence that's wrong, gone. And this one actually wants a empty space at the end of it. And now we've completed and set the style guide for that, so we're good. So now we actually need an actual run command so our bot can actually execute. So it's bot.run. Now in here is our token. But what I'm going to do, instead of typing our token out here and saving it and having it saved on file, not a good idea. I'm actually going to use OS. This is actually a Python OS environment. So we're actually going to grab environment variable called Discord token. Now, once again, click on OS, import OS. We added it up there, all happy. So what's gonna happen is um, this is gonna run, it's gonna pull out the environment environment, uh, environment variable discord token and put it in here. So then it runs with the token. Because we don't actually wanna put our, our discord token in here because it's a secure token. Anyone that gets that token can control your bot. So you wanna be careful, hide that token. Now let's go get our token. So we're going to head over back over to the developer portal. We're actually going to go to the bot. And you're going to copy, co don't reveal it. Don't, you, you can regenerate it if someone gets it, but you want to copy it. You don't want to be in general. See there's a copy token here and the client secret here. These are not what you want. You want to go make sure in the bot, copy the token. So now once we've had it copied, there's multiple places you can actually put it. You can actually put it in your Windows environment, but we're going to put it as an environment variable in PyCharms that is part of the run command. So open up PyCharms. So um, there's edit configurations. Now there's a main in here. We're gonna get rid of this because we deleted the main already. We're gonna add a Python command. It's unnamed. We're gonna call it bot. We're gonna script path. Click here, open up here and select our bot. So we PyCharms, malicious discord app, bot. Okay. Now environment variables, Python buffered equals one. We're gonna add a new one by clicking the uh, right here and then hit the add and it's called discord token. It is case sensitive, so make sure it's typed the same way that you actually have it typed. And in here, you're gonna actually paste in your discord token. Hit okay, hit apply, hit okay. Now, now we're ready to actually run our discord bot. To run a discord bot, we're simply gonna hit the little play icon up here, run bot. Click that, and you can see down here, you don't actually see anything. It's just, oh, hey, it's running that. This means you can stop. This means it's still running, which is great. So now let's go head over to our Discord server. If we look at welcome, you notice we're missing a bot down here, right? So if we scroll up, you see Intel officer. There he is right there. Now, what I like to do is actually create another channel called bot test. No one else is in here except for the bots. We have, uh, this is actually Meep and this is Patchbot. What I'm gonna do is actually edit the channel. We go to permissions, we're gonna add, we're gonna scroll down till we find militia app right here. And we're going to say, read and send messages, save changes. Escape. Now you can see he has actually access to this. So let's test our command. If we type greater than ping, it responds with Pong. Our bot is now communicating with us. That's a job well done. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, please hit that like button below and leave a comment if you have any questions. I'll do my best to answer them. If you'd like to see more content like this, then please smash that subscribe button. And you can also follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Maniocrity. We're actually Friday, Saturday, and Sunday evening starting at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Till next time, YouTube, take it easy.